Hello there and welcome to Sanger Studios. I'm here as usual in my secret underground bunker and I'm going to tell you about my current project which is to build a live rig for playing keys. I used to play keyboards in various bands. I had a kind of an old Yamaha keyboard at first as a teenager and then I bought a secondhand Fender Rhodes. Then I also had a clavinet. Well, I've still got it, in fact. It's in the UK. But here I am in Japan. I don't have my clavinet here. I've got the one I made. I'll stick a link to that video up here somewhere. But uh, I don't have something that's just very easy just to take to gigs, plug into a PA system and just play. So I thought maybe I'll buy one. So I had a look online. I thought, ooh, you know, Nords are nice. Let's have a look at a Nord. Holy moly, how much is that? That's a lot of money. Not buying that at all. So I had to look at what I had lying around. And one thing I do have is an old Edirol PC50. Um, the sticker on the back says 2008. I think I probably got it a year or two after that because I think it was shop soiled. Uh, I got it on the cheap. It's actually quite a nice keyboard. It's got four octaves. Uh, the action's all right. I mean, it's not weighted or anything, but it's okay. Full size keys. It's very compact for what it is. As well as a hold pedal, it's got a expression pedal input as well, which is really useful. And it's all USB powered. But it doesn't look very nice. It's got a kind of uh, silvery grey plastic case covered in information. So I decided the first thing I need to do is to make it a different colour. So I went to the DIY shop, had a look at the paints. What colour should I get? I quite like that yellow colour. I quite like the turquoise. Purple looks nice. Nope, I'm going to go for red. I think red is the funkiest colour really. So I got some red paint, came back home, took the screws out, took the top off the keyboard, unplugged all these electric bits inside, take them out. That's the uh, little uh, mod wheel pitch bend combo thing and another little circuit board. Oh, I'm taking some bits of uh, Velcro off the top there. I'll explain what they're for later. I've got to put a bit of masking tape over that little window. So here's the spray paint. This bit here says plastic, so I'm sure it'll be fine. Let's go! I to uh, spray the car park a bit. Around. Okay, now I'm going to cut that little bit of masking tape out. I'm scoring along the edges with a blade and I'm going to pull it out very gently, clean up a little bit and start putting the things back in. Screw it all back together again. And I bought this special pen to uh, label some of the controls again. I don't need all of the labels. There's much too much information on it before. Um, you can see I've tested it on that piece of newspaper behind that's covered in the same paint. I didn't want to get a chemical reaction uh, of the paint and the marker. Oh, here I'm brushing over the raised writing on the side, which just highlights it and makes it clearer and easier to read. And uh, here I'm cutting out some of the Velcro that I took off earlier, the magic tape. Now why am I doing that? Well, I'll tell you. It's to attach this little Korg Nano Control. Okay, now that's all done. Let's see how it sounds. Okay. 
for watching. Uh, in the next part of this video I'll explain more about what's going on with the other hardware and the software. Um, but in the meantime please drop me a like if you enjoyed this video uh, and subscribe if you haven't already. If you'd like to ask me a question you're welcome to do that in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it. And uh, thank you again for watching. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.